All right, so IPsec, like I was telling Ralph and Fred, it's really, really simple. What complicates it is um, it being new information. That's that's really it. And the computer, let's get a server. Let's get this web server. This is our web server over here. I need a tunnel. I like this. All right. Okay. So one more time, we're getting ready to just um, give you a different visual visualization of IPsec. All right, we're all set now. So we have you, the end user. The end user is the person using the laptop. It could be a phone, it could be a tablet, um, a workstation, wh whatever device you're using. For our scenario here, we have a laptop. And you happen to be at home during COVID. But your company does not trust your home network. Your home network is your Wi-Fi, whatever you use to connect to the internet at home. That's your access point, it's your router, it's your Wi-Fi. So since your company can't trust your home network because they don't have control over it, they can't scan your home network as many times as they do the company's network, right? So, oh, somebody said to So they have you install a VPN on your laptop. You can go and install a VPN Anywhere you want to open VPN, uh, I, I put VPN, but you can install a VPN. They all work the same. There are different ones out there. It doesn't, they're all the same. So they have you install this VPN on your laptop. Right here, we have a VPN installed on it. We went to openvpn.com and we installed it. Now, you're using the VPN to connect back to this guy safely. Your company doesn't know if your network is safe. You could have an open network at home, which means you don't use a password to connect to your, to your Wi-Fi. That's open, like uh, hot, like um, airports, hotels, um, coffee shops, open networks. They don't require a password. So you're using this VPN. I could and, work, bro. Yo. I was going to ask, like, if you use a VPN, I don't know, I ain't mean to take this off, but if you use a VPN in in an airport, it would um make your traffic safe. Exactly. So let's say we're in an airport right now. You're trying to get to onlinesecurity.com right here on this web server. If you're not, if you don't have a VPN, I can see everything you're doing when you're on onlinesecurity.com. If online security isn't encrypted it is encrypted but let's imagine it wasn't let's imagine the website wasn't encrypted it doesn't have that lock icon next to the web browser that chandre showed you all if it wasn't encrypted everything you do on that airport's network which is open i can see it just like we saw last cyber thursday with the man in the middle attack and we're going to see it again today if you have a vpn what the vpn does is creates a tunnel the VPN creates a tunnel and it's it encrypts all of your information, anything you're doing on the internet, on that open network, it encrypts it inside of this tunnel and sends it to the web server. That's what a VPN does. Now, how it encrypts it is with IPsec. It's using IPsec to create the tunnel and encrypt the tunnel and prove that you are the person on the other end of this tunnel going to the web server. And the web server is who they say they are coming back to you. So all that IPsec is doing is giving you a secure way to communicate on open networks or any, it doesn't even have to be an open network. It can be a, 
an encrypted network, you just have your VPN just because. Some companies still require you to use a VPN to get into a server, web servers, um, web applications, whatever, because it's just more safe uh, as a as a uh, on the operation side of things. So if that was clear, um, if IPsec was clear, if you guys don't have any other questions from the class, I'm going to go ahead and dive into our session for today. Anybody got any questions? Yay, nay. No, I, I understand it. Um, is that also, because I think he also talked about um, reverse path forwarding. Is that also when it does that? Um, when it's doing a encrypting in a tunnel and it sends it to the web server, can it also so, can it also be doing that at that time too? So what? So reverse path forwarding is for routers. Oh, um, right. So that's, that's, that's different. yeah, that's for routers, and that's just to make sure that. Um, and I'm not sure if he went into it. It's it's. And you're not going to need to go into too much details with RPF for the exam, especially for the exam. But it's uh, just to make sure that your routers aren't. Um, it's to prevent denial of service attacks, pretty much. Cool. All right. Um, that's it. I'm going to put down my Picasso painting right there. And do I remember my password? That's wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do today, let's see, I have this toolbar messing me up again from last Thursday. All right, so what we're, this is, we have our Kali operating system. This is our attack machine once again, and we're going to have our victim machine. If I can click it, I got to do this again, and we're going to have our victim machine right here which is our window system, okay? So what we did last class is we set up a man in the middle attack and we started capturing traffic going back and forth from our victim machine to our attacking machine. So what we're gonna do again, we're gonna set up that same man in the middle, uh, that art spoof, we're gonna set up that art spoof We may not go into too much details of it. You can stop me if you want to, um, but I did record last class, so we're, you're going to see that online shortly. But let's go ahead and start up this ARP spoofing attack, and we're going to get into cross-site scripting. I just want you to see the man in the middle attack one more time. So if you remember last time what we did was we ran a quick little ARP spoof command. And remember, you don't need to know this for your exam, um, setting this up or how to do it. What you want to know is what it is and how it works. Whoops. I need my IPs. Okay. 